starting a company is like banging your head against the wall repeatedly for 10 years, uh, and then eventually realizing that there's a door. Adam Draper is the founder and CEO of Boost VC, a California-based accelerator that focuses on Bitcoin. Boost caused quite a stir when they announced they planned to invest in 100 Bitcoin companies over the next three years. Many people called the plan crazy, but as a fourth generation venture capitalist known to take risks, Mr. Draper wouldn't have it any other way. This is Adam Draper of Boost VC. How I got into Boost was I, uh, I, I founded a company called Expert Financial about six years ago where we helped later stage companies raise capital online. Um, that was my first foray into starting a business uh, out of college. And I made so many mistakes throughout my four years that I realized I was able to help other people not make the same mistakes I did. So I was able to help, uh, uh, one of my friends came to me and said, you know, I'm thinking about starting this thing. And I was able to guide him around sort of, you know, six month pitfalls. Uh, and he was easily able to uh, build his product, raise capital uh, and sort of build the business. And, and so I, uh, I found a, a lot of fulfillment from helping him do that, mentoring him into doing that. And so about four years into my company, I pitched an idea to my team. I said, why don't we help early stage companies raise capital online? Because I felt like I, I, I'm very valuable to an early stage company. Uh, and my team unanimously rejected it. Uh, and so I, uh, I, and so I talked to my CEO at that time and I said, you know, I really want to move in this direction. I really want to help early stage companies. And what I, and, and he said, you know, you've been here for about 40 years. Uh, why don't you go do that? Why don't you go start this, this company? And so I ended up launching something called Boost Funder, uh, where we were matching investors and entrepreneurs, uh, crowdfunding, actually. It was crowdfunding for equity. And I uh, found, I found, well, we found very quickly in the first month that we didn't like just being a part of the transaction. Like I did with the me mentorship with uh, my, my friend, I found that I like being a part of the building process. I like being a part of the thinking process and helping and connecting. And so I, uh, we quickly uh, rerouted our business, changed our business, um, and we found, and I'd been visiting a lot of uh, accelerator programs and I found that mentoring in bulk was called an accelerator. And so what I did was I, uh, looked around for space and real estate's very expensive in Silicon Valley and we lucked out. I, I'm uh, based, we, we actually lease out the top two floors of a hotel building in downtown San Mateo and then we have office space across the street so the commute is zero basically, it's 30 seconds. Um, and so once we found space you really need uh, good mentors and speakers and you need companies and so we found those things. We ran a program, one full program, and it was a three month long program where they lived with us. We provided office space. We coached, we brought in, brought in mentors and speakers, and uh, it went really well. Six of the seven companies raised additional money. Um, and so we found, hey, we're pretty good at this. Um, and so in between our first and our second program, so right before I started, uh, a company called uh, Coinbase, but the, the CEO of Coinbase was named, was Brian Armstrong, uh, pitched me on Coinbase. And so I, uh, I had never heard of Bitcoin. And so I, I was thinking, um, what, like, what, I, I read it somewhere and I said, what is this magic money thing? And so I set up a meeting with Brian and I, we met at this local coffee shop in, in Mountain View, um, California. And we, and he was pitching me on this, you know, uh, global currency concept that uh, I immediately grabbed onto two things about Bitcoin. One was, the idea that I could travel the entire globe without cashing into one currency. And I felt, if 2008 proved anything to me and I hope other people is that we're a global economy now and if one thing happens to one country, it happens to all the countries. And, and we influence each other so, we're tied together so tightly that that's a really strong thing. Um, and, but there's no currency that actually transcends borders in a way that makes us all on the same currency structure. And Bitcoin without really trying transcended borders and you could send value around the world. And that was a very exciting thing to me. The other exciting thing was that there had already been a crash. So in 2011, um, the price of Bitcoin went from $30 to $0. And that was an exciting thing because when I was talking to Brian a year after that had happened, the price of Bitcoin was about $15 per Bitcoin already. And it, to me, that proved that A, there's a use case for Bitcoin. B, there's a passionate community around Bitcoin that willed this thing back, back into existence and just wants it to happen. 
And so I, I got really excited because I, I, I felt that was very cool. So that was right before I started like Boost. First session of Boost, there was no Bitcoin. We were just trying to run a session. I invested in Coinbase at that time. Um, then in between the first and the second session, we were thinking about different uh, technology we wanted to get behind. And so what we ended up doing was uh, when we were looking at Bitcoin, we found that there were really, there's so much opportunity in this uh, financial technology currency structure, but there were only five companies. And so our thesis was, what happens if we double the population of Bitcoin companies? Um, and so what we ended up doing was, uh, we, we announced this. So we, we said, okay, we're Boost. We're gonna be accepting five to seven Bitcoin companies in the next batch at Boost, um, which will be two thirds of our session or something like that. The response from that was incredible. The, uh, I got reached out to by 150 enthusiast investors and entrepreneurs in the, who are excited about Bitcoin. And I got to have really great conversation. I say right when we announced that as a team, we were not experts on Bitcoin. By the end of that month where I talked to 150 people in a month, we were experts. Like we knew where everyone stood, we knew what, what was happening, and we knew the sort of value add that Bitcoin brought. So we ended up uh, accepting uh, seven Bitcoin companies into the next batch, and there was a lot of excitement around it. We actually got very talented people. Um, from that batch, we ended up with uh, Bitpagos, uh, Varum, um, a bunch of other really great companies. So, so we, we accelerated seven, seven companies in that batch. And it's sort of, what was exciting was right when we announced, the price of Bitcoin went from, I, I believe the price was about $30 right when we announced. And we had been thinking about it for, since 15, and then we announced on 30. And then over the next eight weeks, it went up to 250. And that was, it, it was sort of like, it became popular overnight. Like Bitcoin was suddenly a, a thing that everyone was excited, about, everyone wanted to talk about. And so I feel like for the last two years, I've just been talking about Bitcoin, which, which is fantastic. I feel like I, one of my jobs now is ambassador to Bitcoin. Like I, I have to spread the good cheer about Bitcoin. Um, and so we ended up accelerating these companies. They all raised some amount of money, uh, anywhere between, I don't know, $200,000 and $4.5 million. And they've been, um, they've all been growing, volume, traction. And then we, uh, we've had two sessions since. So now we have accelerated 26 Bitcoin companies um, and 65 companies in total. And uh, we have, uh, we've made the statement that we will be accelerating 100 Bitcoin companies, investing in 100 Bitcoin companies in the next three years. And so that's, uh, that's sort of our support we're throwing behind it. We believe in Bitcoin that much. Um, and yeah, that's sort of our quick story around Boost. Um, it's the coolest thing ever, if uh, that helps. So what, one of the things that uh, being an entrepreneur before I started the Accelerator did was it gave me a lot of experience around starting a business and all that comes with it. And uh, you know, both the frustrations, the highs, the lows, basically starting a company is like, I mean, I have two analogies that I generally use. Uh, one is a roller coaster where it's always the best and worst day of your life. Uh, like the, the best thing will happen on one day and then the worst thing, same, same day, the worst thing will happen. It'll be like someone pulls funding and then the biggest, the biggest client signs up. That, that, that happens so often and you're so passionate about it that you're, it's an emotional roller coaster ride. Uh, the other is that it's like banging your head against the wall uh, repeatedly for 10 years uh, and then eventually re realizing that there's a door. Uh, like the, 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 it's a uh, it, and it takes five years to become so there, there's all these inherent like emotional struggles and also uh, just it, it, like things that you have to experience and really to be able to give the guidance and so what I did was I was able to uh, have those experiences have those uh, not necessarily failures but learnings and now what I'm able to do is apply them and help uh, other companies not have the same uh, really downtrodden events um, happen or six months setbacks. And so um, that, uh, that, that concept combined with the fact that uh, I'm actually, my family is actually a fourth generation venture capitalist. So we are probably the only family that is fourth generation venture capitalist. My great grandpa started a firm 
Uh, my grandpa started a firm uh, and that evolved into uh, something called Sutter Hill, which evolved into something. Then he started a, one called Draper uh, International, where he was the first fund in India. And then my dad started a, uh, a fund uh, called, that is now called DFJ. And, he's, uh, and he created this, this network around the globe that uh, helped expand venture not only fr to, from Silic in Silicon Valley or even in this nation, United States, but globally. And now I got to use sort of the experiences from both of them and um, my great-grandfather, who I, I hope I got to learn some things from, um, that uh, from my grandpa and my dad. And then uh, I got to take that and my entrepreneurial experience and apply it into uh, accelerating these companies. And so what, what I do is I invest in companies, but I'm able to take these experiences from um, my entire lineage and also my um, experience as an entrepreneur. And it's sort of like the, I, this job was made for me and then I eventually caught up to it. I mean, the way I look at it is that Bitcoin companies are startups. They're just in this very niche category of startups. So they go through everything that a startup goes through, the highs, the lows, uh, team battles, investment, fundraising, but their industry is much smaller. So there are very few people who have the knowledge base that they do. Um, and so that has been one of the huge value adds of, of Boost really is that uh, we've created a network of 26 companies that all of them can draw from. And so that is, uh, that is something that's sort of irreplaceable because we've been in it for, we've been accelerating companies for 18 months in that space specifically. Um, Bitcoin people have a, uh, it's like a pirate mentality. Uh, they, they, they feel like the system is against them a little bit uh, because they're in this uh, tightly knit group club almost. Um, that is that that they know something that the world doesn't know yet and they're trying to make it happen They're trying to make the world understand it um, And having that mentality has driven a lot of innovation in a lot of different fields too not only Bitcoin But having that mentality makes it The people in the industry more passionate it makes them feel like I need to articulate this to the world I need them to understand why Bitcoin works and then also why my company works um, and so that's been a big, big struggle because investors or venture capitalists who are in the Bitcoin space, uh, not in the Bitcoin space, sorry, venture capitalists or investors in general, they have to be in Bitcoin. They have to understand Bitcoin and they have to get Bitcoin and be behind it before they will back a Bitcoin company. Because it's like, if you're a Bitcoin company what's, what, and they don't want Bitcoin to succeed, like it's a, the meeting doesn't make sense yet. Um, or you're just not going to raise the money. It, it does make sense. You should, every company should always be selling their business. It just might not be, uh, you might not get an immediate reward. Like you might not raise funding. You might not, but there are a lot of, so this early stage of Bitcoin startup, everyone has to be an ambassador to the, the sector, to the currency. Um, that's why like, it's such a bummer that uh, Silk Road and Mt. Gox are sort of black stains on this industry is that um, when you talk to someone who hasn't really been in the space very much, all they think is that Bitcoin is used for illegal transactions um, and that there are thieves among it in the space. And so that's one of the reasons that we need great companies, great entrepreneurs coming out of it and then uh, like to everyone to really be ambassadors to helping Bitcoin as a whole. Um, it, it, it is nice, I do see a lot of uh, working together mentality um, I'm starting to see the space like enough money being put into it that there's a little bit of a com more of a competitive vibe now. Um, but the in general, everyone understands that there needs to be this articulation of Bitcoin is the future and they need to be able to tell they need to be able to explain that to someone um, and really convince them. So that's that, that, that's sort of my, my thought process around Bitcoin companies and what they're going through. Um, the other, I mean, the other thing is a general uh, startup mentality thing uh, that I try to instill in all of the startups that go through Boost, which is focus. Um, right now, not only Bitcoin and every start, Bitcoin I'll, I'll use as my example, but there, there are a lot of shiny objects that people can chase around. Uh, and the main issue is that you should solve the problem that you're setting out to solve. Um, and, and make sure that you solve that problem with your product. Because there, 
there will always be other ways in which you might be able to make money or follow like some other path that someone like might think is a good idea. But the uh, but it, as long as you set out and you think the problem you're setting out to solve is a big enough problem, it's really important to follow through with that before you switch direction. Um, and that's something that a lot of people, like entrepreneurs on, on a whole, uh, have a little ADD when it comes to uh, the, the, the concepts. And so I, what we focus on at Boost is really keeping people on course. They pitch an idea to us. I mean, if they want to change their idea, that's fine, but they need to really focus on solving whatever that problem is that they want, they want to be solving. Um, I don't think like the entrepreneurs of today are necessarily thinking like uh, they, they don't have that, you know, banks are awful and they're the worst or the, the, the mentality that like this is a direct re recoil from uh, the bank crisis. Um, I think they are starting to see opportunities rather than like it's the infrastructure has been built enough now that people are people are looking to the future of how this technology can work. But still, the mentality is sort of in pirate in essence because it's the world doubting that it can exist, and then people, the, the small community of people who are all very tightly knit, believing it will. And so it, it's an ongoing struggle and sort of battle debate that's happening with sort of Bitcoin people in the rest of the world. And so that, that is sort of my, the, it's the mentality that they're enacting change that needs to exist and people in response are doubting it. And so it's like, I know something you don't, but I'm gonna convince you otherwise. I do think there was a direct correlation between Satoshi Nakamoto white paper and 2008, uh, the, the, the you know bank crisis. It was a small, I, I would guess it was a group of people. I don't know, we don't know who Satoshi is, um, but it's a group of people who sought to solve the problem of, I don't want to entrust banks with all of my money or my value. Um, and that, that was sort of the question that they were trying to answer was, how do we do this? Um, how do you do this without just creating like safes that you keep a bunch of cash in, uh, would be my guess. And so there are two sides to Bitcoin. Uh, one is uh, the tangible holding value, which is the Bitcoin itself. And then one is uh, the blockchain, which the blockchain is this technology that was created that uh, enables a trusted transaction to happen between two non-trusted parties without a third party. So uh, right now, if I wanted to buy your shoes off of you, uh, I would have to use a bank. I would have to use Visa if I was gonna do it digitally. But with Bitcoin, suddenly I can go peer to peer. I can go directly to you because of this blockchain technology. The things that I'm excited about is there are a lot of things I'm excited about. One is Bitcoin is super, super valuable to the unbanked, but they don't necessarily know it yet, but their, their entire, like, there are countries in Africa that are, don't trust their, their banks, their government, and they're, it's 90, but they have 90% mobile adoption. So they've, they have cell phones, they have smart cell phones. Uh, droids are being bought over there. The, uh, but they don't store their money in banks. So they hold cash, they hold physical cash which is like a foreign concept to me now because I literally don't ever have cash on me. And I think what Bitcoin does is it equalizes the financial technologies of the world. It's not only about, uh, it's not only about this value, the speculative currency, it's about suddenly like uh, people who m might not have had uh, the ability to bank in something or like trust their banks, they can trust themselves to hold their money. Um, or their value, which is very exciting. So I think it brings financial technologies up to a level that it should be at globally. It's not like US is 93% digital and uh, you know the Congo is 10% 10, 10 banked and not digital. Um, and so suddenly there, there's all this uh, innovation that's happening. I think one of the other things that's really exciting is that Bitcoin made financial technology sexy. Like suddenly we have the smartest minds in, uh, in engineering excited about building out financial technology, which is, has been a generally boring business. And it's needed because everything is built on top of it. But gen like we have people, I know some of the smartest engineers who are working on uh, NM AML and KYC uh, like requirements. And I'm, they're, they're just trying to make it better. And that it's so funny because they're really building NM money laundering rules and KYC like uh, computer software, not computer software. And they're doing it in order to 
like solve this huge problem for Bitcoin. So they feel they're contributing to the entire ecosystem by building this one thing, which is super exciting, but it's also like they're engineers. Five years ago, they wouldn't have, you couldn't have paid them a million dollars to work on that. Um, and so we're, we're seeing this update of financial technology that's super, super exciting. And so uh, I'm excited about both blockchain and Bitcoin technologies. I'm excited about the services. Um, and I'm just excited, like, the community has sort of welcomed Boost into it. And I'm excited about supporting that because they welcomed us when we were sort of uh, figuring our stuff out still. And now I feel like we figured out our stuff and I feel very uh, indebted to this community of individuals. So it's, it's a great uh, community around it. So a company that's trying to build remittance specifically uh, needs to build infrastructure on both sides of a country. So both sides of a border, not a country. Uh, they need to build one, let, let's say it's like sending money from Ireland to the United States. Like you would need to build infrastructure for an exchange on both Ireland and the United States. And so it's nearly impossible. There's a lot of red tape. It's very like you have to have cultural knowledge. You have to have industry knowledge. You have to do like lots of things on two different sides. So it would be probably four times as expensive as just doing on one side. Turns out with Bitcoin, it's more valuable just to create a, an exchange of Bitcoin in each country um, and, oh, or, or continent, and, the, uh, and they connect naturally through the technology. And so if you start, so that, you know, Bitpagos and Volabit both have similar uh, companies actually, but they're in different countries. And so they can work together. There's a, uh, or Coinbase, or uh, you know, we, we've uh, Palerin and CoinHako uh, and CoinMotion, and they, they all can sort of tie together in this remittance network where if you buy in uh, and you buy some Bitcoin, you can send mo money around the world rather fluidly into anyone's wallet uh, internationally. And so that's super exciting. And so I, that's sort of my thesis is that it, it, for the remittance network to work, you need these, ex these brokerages or exchanges in every country and then all of a sudden you're sending money seamlessly. So the first time I met Sebastian, uh, he was one of the first 150 people to reach out to me uh, when, when we uh, announced that we were gonna be supporting the Bitcoin ecosystem. And so he, I think he had come straight from Argentina or something and he was, uh, he had, when I started going to Bitcoin conferences, he was at every single conference, every single one. And I, like he would just pop up. He'd be at the meetups. He would be at the like every single time I turned around, like Sebastian was there, too. And so we sort of grew uh, into a friendship relationship. Um, and his, his original pitch was, you know, his experience with the uh, Argentine peso was over his you know, 30 years of life. Um, he had lost the value of his currency three times. And that, that's like super scary. That's crazy scary. In the US, we can't even imagine that happening. Although we're only 250 years old. So it's like, you know, the, but, but we can't imagine just losing our money. But it's a key problem in Argentina and he wanted to set us solve it. And he knew Bitcoin was the way that this was gonna happen. His determination in Bitcoin, by the way, he always wore this Google Glass every time I saw him, like for the first 10 times, he had this little Google Glass on. And I was just, <laughs> I'd just be like, Sebastian, like, what, what's, are you recording all of our conversation? What's going on with this, the Google Glass? And he, he's, you know, he, he's an engineer. He just wants to learn about all the technologies that he could potentially use. I'm sure he was trying to like send Bitcoin through, through Google Glass or something. Um, and he, uh, and so we at, at Boost, when we announced it, we, we, the overwhelming response, one of the people who reached, reached out uh, and we had met a couple, I'm not sure if we had met them before when we had started going to meetups or he reached out because of our announcement, but he, we interviewed him, we interviewed him again. Um, and he was just a really great guy, really, really nice, really, really smart and super passionate about Bitcoin. And those were really the two things we wanted uh, in our first batch at Bitcoin because we weren't giving enormous checks. At that time, it was ten to $15,000. Um, we're still ten dollars to $20,000, but ten dollars to $15,000. And we want passion because we wanted them to, we wanted to know that there was an existence after Boost for those companies. And so he em was emblematic of that. Like we knew that this was a big enough problem for him at a, in his homeland that he was going to be passionate and build this thing 
for the next five years, no matter what. Next five years of his life was dedicated to Bitcoin. And so we, so we backed him. Um, and since then, he has built a great infrastructure for Bitcoin not in Argentina. Um, and people know he's a brand in the Bitcoin space now, which is really, really exciting. Um, in our next session, uh, we accepted, uh, there, were, there were four Bitcoin companies. One of them was Volabit, which was then called CoinCove. Um, and my first re reaction to them was it, it was through, it was a pitch. So they applied to Boost um, and they, they entered the office and the, it was uh, Tomas, H Hannah and Rodrigo. And they, uh, they just impressed me. It was just they, 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 every, they, they were very, they understood how each other worked. Oh no, it wasn't they walked in the office. That was our Skype, it was a Skype interview. So it's even more impressive. This is even more impressive because it was a Skype interview. So we, they, they didn't walk into the office. It was like, I was looking at a screen and those are really difficult to do well. Like getting a good Skype interview, like you need to be 2X on your game. And I just, I liked them. And I knew, they, they proved to me that they had the ability to build what they wanted to do. Um, they hadn't built it yet. So it, it hadn't been uh, launched. And, and, but they had the ability to do it. And they had the experience in Mexico uh, and then also he convinced me that, he, you know, in, in the Bitcoin world, having a bank account is like a really big deal. It's actually a huge problem in the Bitcoin world is no, no one, it's very difficult to get a bank that's going to bank you. Um, and he convinced me that it was not a problem. And he, was, he, he said, I, we have a Mexican bank account. They know we're doing Bitcoin. And, and, I, and basically in the Bitcoin realm, that's, that's gold. And so I, as long as, and so I really liked their interactions. I liked how they worked. They felt when they sort of worked together. And I felt, uh, yeah, to, to, Tomas was just very thoughtful about every, he was very thoughtful about his responses. He took all, some of the best entrepreneurs, they know what their mission is. They know what the end goal is. Um, and, but they receive feedback extremely well. And they take it and they consume it and they figure out what people are actually trying to say with that feedback. Tomas has that. He's got that like, he knows what he needs to do, but he's taking all the feedback along the way and he's not, he's, he doesn't reject it. He's not defensive if you're criticizing his product. He knows what his end goal is. He knows some people can help him. And so he, he really takes that feedback well. So those were my first two responses to meeting those two guys. Uh, I really got those teams. I think those are gonna be like, world changing teams because they're going to dominate these different countries in uh, the world. So in the Bitcoin space. Follow us on Twitter to be the first to know about new videos on the protocol.tv.